How's it going? It is all the news all the time and there's some interesting news coming out today. We're going to be looking at uh, Wild Bunch International's take on uh, taking on Johnny Depp on their new film and why they thought it was a risk. We're also going to be looking at uh, some of the new images from the uh, Jeanne de Barry film, uh, some uh, creative decisions that have been made on the new film, some exclusive photos and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, colour chemistry of uh, dyes I think we're going to be looking at and we're going to be looking at Margot Robbie I mean what's going on with that really nice to have you here and if you uh, haven't already it'd be really great if you could like and subscribe so you don't miss any videos uh, this membership is now available so if you fancy being a member of the channel that really does help you get some uh, strange little icons you can use in the chat and uh, of Johnny Depp which is quite fun and uh, yeah let's crack on so we're looking at this uh, article from Variety which says Wild Bunch International's Vincent Maraval on uh, taking a bet on Johnny Depp, the need to take risks. So here we, we have, uh, it's the, this guy is the owner of uh, Wild Bunch International and they're the production company that are making the new film that Johnny Depp is going to be the King Louis XV. Uh, that's what he's going to play. So he's saying, back in the film in which Johnny Depp will play the King, is what Wild Bunch International head Vincent Maraval describes as part of the risk uh, taking that is essential to this business. In a keynote interview with CAA Media Finance's Rogue Sutherland at the San Sebastian First Creative Investors Conference on Monday, Maraval discussed his 23 years in the business. Uh, the fact he failed to bet on the Black Swan film, and that went huge, huge success, but going for it with Depp's first film since the Amber Heard trial. Um, yeah, so he's seeing it as a sort of a risk, but um, from what I'm seeing, it's paying off massively. Uh, this film is being seen as the most publicised film in France at the moment because of Johnny Depp. Um, so the film, Jeanne de Barry, is that sometimes we need to take a risk, he says, and this risk is much higher, says Maraval. We are doing Johnny Depp playing Louis XV. People said, don't do a movie with him, but we liked it. I remember the discussion we had with the producer behind it who said, do you think we're doing something stupid? I said, probably, but what's left if not? So that's quite an interesting and telling statement. I mean, what, what do they have left if they don't go with Johnny Depp? Do they go with another uh, somewhat unknown actor? They wouldn't get the interest and publicity that they're getting now. But now they've gone with Johnny Depp. This is global. So many people know about this film, which they wouldn't have done without Johnny Depp being in it. Would you have heard of another French language Jeanne de Barry film? Uh, really? Would you have heard of it? So there you go. Um, they're saying Jeanne de Barry is based on a screenplay written by Francis Mai Wen, who will star in and direct the French film, so French language film. So again, that's putting a lot of pressure on Mai Wen uh, because she's uh, writing the screenplay. She She's uh, acting in it as the uh, lead character, Jeanne de Barry, and she's directing it, which is pretty much everything. Um, and when they were asking here, uh, I remember the discussion we had with the producer. I was thinking, who is the producer? I thought Wild Bunch International, our production company. IN2, which is Johnny Depp's European production company, is also part producing it. Uh, but he might be talking about Mywen herself um, in terms of production. So I'm not sure who he means when he says discussion we had with the producer. If you know, let me know in the comments. That would be fantastic. Um, so yeah, uh, Netflix is releasing this French language production on SVOD, which is streaming video on demand. And that's after a theatrical release in France. My understanding it's 15 months that it's going to be in uh, theatres in France. And then it will be on SVOD and uh, possibility of accessing it then. So it's going to be quite a while unless you can get some sort of access to French cinemas. Uh, so Wild Bunch is handling international sales. Maravel said during the keynote that his Jean de Barry partner, Netflix, was positive for the business. Uh, he's, he's mentioning some strange things about Netflix here. Uh, let's have a little look. He's saying Netflix is a real force for us. Of course, I work with them. This is all sensible and logical. And I think their chance to survive is cinema. Netflix is massive. I don't know why he's talking about their chance to survive. Maybe he's talking about the, the pressure from the other streaming services coming in, Disney Plus, HBO, Discovery's got its own streaming service. Um, there's a lot of pressure in that marketplace and it's a very expensive marketplace for companies. Netflix is spending a huge amount of money. Uh, the studios controlled 90% of the market uh, for the first time in history. There is an independent company that has control. We know it won't last and it will be a parenthesis in history that the independents control the business. People complain about them, but I think it's our chance. 
I think he's talking here about Netflix being an independent company and the studios used to control 90% of the market. Companies like Warner Brothers and uh, Fox. Uh, talking to Warner Brothers, they're in deep trouble at the moment. I expect them to be sold in April 2024 and uh, taken apart um, because they are in huge debt at the moment and what they own could be very useful to companies that run theme parks and they've got a lot of money and the Warner Brothers share price is halved but that's a different story for a different day I think. Um, so yeah quite interesting what he's talking about taking a risk um, on Johnny Depp but I'm thinking this is a really profitable risk for him. The interest that's been generated is global uh, about this and it wouldn't be anything like that without Johnny Depp. No one would know about this film at all um, outside of I don't know very specialist French cinemas. So what else is going on in the uh, crazy world? Uh, we've got an interesting story here. This is from uh, Jonathan Kinsland and he's reporting uh, as you can see here we've got a translation with my colleagues from the region's cinema committee. There they are. We had the pleasure of being welcomed by the Why Not Productions that's what we were just talking about um, on the set of the film by Mywen who's the director and screenwriter and uh, actress Jeanne de Barry and they're saying promising. Um, I'll have a little look. I'll bring these photos up uh, a bit larger on the main screen and as you can see there they are. They always look very French. Don't they look very French? Women always look very chic. And men have got this sort of, I don't know, the blue jeans with the jacket. It always looks a bit sort of agricultural yet urban. I don't know. I uh, might be making stuff up there. Let's have a look at this uh, exclusive photo. Uh, this is the costume from the Jeanne de Barry. This is inside the costume department of the upcoming film Jeanne de Barry that uh, Johnny Depp is going to play the lead character. Well, he's going to play King Louis the Fifteenth, And um, I'm looking at these costumes and I'm thinking these ones at the front, they look uh, period appropriate to me. They look the right sort of colours and tonal shades. Um, the period we're talking about, this is King Louis the Fifteenth. He is um, 1710 to 1774. So you look in 18th century beginning of the 18th century through to the third quarter of the 18th century um so 1710 1774 um these look correct these though this blue and this red they look too vivid too bright red to me that looks like synthetic dye color and that blue looks like a synthetic dye color to me as well this purple even this purple here that seems slightly too early uh, to exist in 1710 to 1774. I was looking at some uh, chemistry, uh, colour chemistry of dyes. These are the uh, standard colours in general use and this was in the 20th century, so this is 1900s. So this is 100 years after King Louis XV and this is some of the standard colours you would find in use and how they look after three weeks of being exposed to UV light. And these are the synthetic colours uh, called sun door, uh, Scottish word door meaning stubborn and sun meaning the sun so it's meant to be sun resistant colors um, and these are synthetic colors these are natural pigments and you would not see uh, reds like that these are just too vivid too blue too red even this purple uh, I was looking at some dye chemistry about the purple this uh, movine is one of the first of these synthetic purples that came out but this was a hundred years later that this movine came out um, and it started off the whole synthetic dye industry and it made the inventor uh, I'll bring that up for you and see here synthetic dye boom started with movine uh, which was invented by an 18 year old uh, by the name of Win William Henry Perkin he made this it was 18 years old changed the entire world with these colors um, and that was this movine color but that didn't come out until 1862 and this film is meant to be, well, King Louis XV died in 1770, 1774. So um, this didn't exist for another 100 years. And yet we see it on this dress right here. Um, the only other purple that could exist at the time was made by these small mollusk shells, which were imported from Italy. And that cost a fortune. And it wasn't that vivid because it was only uh, much later that you got this movine, which was quite a strong purple. So I don't know. I was looking at these colours thinking these blues are way too blue and that red, that's ridiculously red. Um, but we'll see. These look okay. These look crazy colours to me, to my personal opinion, for what that's worth. Um, so there you go. So what else is going on in the interesting world of um, the movies at the moment? Well, we've got Margot Robbie there she is. Whew. Now, if those are not synthetic dyes, I've not seen synthetic dyes before. <laughs> look at that. 
those colors jesus um as you can see margot robbie says she was mortified by the leaked barbie photos um i say to that you can't be mortified by leaked photos if you're standing on venice beach in california dressed like that in broad daylight and there's hundreds if not thousands of people around you should not be surprised <laughs> that there are leaked photos you just should not be that's just the way of things and uh, i'll show a little video uh, here to uh, let you know what i'm sort of seeing about this and uh, here they are being driven around in uh, broad daylight and it's the middle of summer and there's thousands of people and yet they are mortified and horrified that uh, there's leaked photos. Right. <laughs> okay. One person online commented, uh, why are they being uh, driven around? They've got rollerblades. They, they just get a rollerblade and rollerblade to where they need to go. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, that's a very good point. But uh, no, you can't have them scuffing up those uh, rollerblades and falling over and uh, doing all sorts of harm to themselves. They're needed for the, uh, the shoot. But uh, yeah, it did make me laugh. I was thinking, yeah, why are they being towed around? <laughs> in a car when you've got rollerblades on but there you go uh so let me know your thoughts your hopes and dreams and ambitions about uh to barbie and what do you think about this uh these colors uh, what are your thoughts on these colors um these i'm fine with and uh what do you think of this is it a risk i think it's a risk well played and uh yeah let me know leave a note in the old comments like and subscribe if you haven't already i'll leave some videos up here you can watch more videos if you want that would be very nice and uh don't forget memberships join up on be a member and i will see you guys later